Hello people, so today this video is going to be about uh, uh, the injector manifold cleaning and the throttle body cleaning. So process is a bit tedious, a bit lengthy, but let's begin, uh, not difficult as such. So first of all, we'll just start with uh, removing the seat, the side panel, right side, left side and the tank. I don't think I need to discuss, I'll post the link in the description where I have uh, talked in details about how to remove tank of all the things that you have to take care of these are simple don't need to open this one just uh, one two three on this side then one two three on this side let's begin with that so this is where we are right now tank has been taken off side covers have been taken off now moving ahead we have to it would be nice if we remove this uh, uh, this place, I mean, what is this? This um, uh, underside of the mudguard, and for that, we have to open this one, two, and then there is one there, uh, three, and then this one, four. So, let's take this out 10 mm. So, that's going to be easy job. Might have to hold the ones that were here, these 10 mm on the outside, but yeah, let's do this. So all the four nuts have been open. Uh, now this bracket is ready to come out. The ECU is clamped onto this, so you can just loosen the ECU, then slide this slightly back. And here you have it. This can be taken from under. This is just the wire that holds that, so yeah. So now we have some more working space. Now the idea is to remove the airbox as well, along with the battery. And then we'll have the access to the uh, throttle body, which is here. And then the injector that is lying there. So let's get rid of the battery first. Now small tip to reuse the zip ties, you take a small screwdriver, I have shared that earlier as well. You insert it between where it locks and here you go, just pull it out like this, good to go, this can be reused now. Next bit would be to reopen this one here to remove the battery as well as once you remove this wiring you will see there is one 10 mm one here as well so let's open these two so both the nuts are out and the bracket is ready to be removed now but before we do that let's just first unmount this flasher that rests on that and this condenser that I'll just take it out from here here you go and my god this is screen time waste but anyways now this bracket is going to move a bit ahead and then it is going to come out no drama there i'm going to need both hands though and there you have it no first no drama just needed both hands you move it a bit out like this because there is a bracket that holds this part in there it locks in like this then you tighten up the nut here as well as the other nut that's not necessary but we have opened it any which ways that was not needed to remove the battery but let's not remove the battery we'll open up the connectors on the top this one and this one let's do that now before uh, moving ahead let's make some space to get the battery out and because we have to remove everything any which ways so this is where your abs unit is that is the bosch abs unit and this is the clamp that you see that is uh, used to remove it so there's this tiny tab here i hope you can see that this one you press it then from the rest of the fingers you pull it down like this and this bracket should thus come out and there you have it so this wire is free now let's connect the rest of the wires as well these are pretty simple just uh, pressing the tab uh, yeah so just so as i was saying these are the small tabs like this one here same this one i think by now you have understood the concept you press them pull them apart same for this one so i'm just going to disconnect all of these Let's do that. 
So that was pretty simple. The only tough one was the ABS wire. Now let's make space and let's get all of this wiring out of the way. The first thing to come would be very easily, carefully, just press this thing down and it will come out from this side. So same thing for this. This will come out from this side. There is enough space if you do it carefully, it will come out from this side. Let's make some space. So the positive one is out. Now for the negative one, I pulled this one out, but there is another connector here. I did not see this before. But again, same mechanism, you press this and you pull this and this will come out. Now sometimes a screwdriver like this does come in handy. You just, this is the tab, but thumb was not doing the trick. So you press it and you push it and this is out. Now, if you see beside this, this is your fuse box. Just get it out of the bracket that is on the air box. This is hardened. This is your air temperature that you see. These are the rest of the flashes, condensers, not show. And your wiring is free. Now all we have to do is get all of this wiring out from here so that that can go on the other side. I'm going to do that. Won't be able to record it, but the basic idea is simple. You push it like this easily. With one hand, I don't want to damage anything. And I oh, forgot to disconnect this. This is simple. So that is the idea. You see my torch there. And uh, easily, carefully, not to damage anything. And there the torch falls. Anyways, but yeah, have to remove this from under this as well. And this for time being is out of the way. Now, since this is new, I can bend it if this was old, like say this four, five, six years maybe, there was a probability that the wire inside were gonna crack, but this being new, this is malleable, so I can take that risk. And Himalayas are pretty new bike, so you can do that. Otherwise, the better idea would have been to just uh, tie a wire here and then hang it somehow, just to make sure it is not bent too much. Right now, I can take that chance. Now, let's move on. Next would be to remove the battery. There is no special trick to it. Okay, hopefully this is a better angle, but yeah, slide it up, slide it a bit forward like this and the battery is out. Now let's move on, let's remove the earbox now. Now for the next part, we have already removed this. This was the one that was holding the battery, now there is one behind there and there are three clamps. When you can see this one and then uh, second is underneath. I don't know how I can capture that. This one, and then third is over there. That one, so these three have to be open, let's do that. Again, 10 mm ones, so starting with this one only. Let me just open all of these three. So this was the bracket in question that was in there, resting on these. Now if you see there are two studs on which your uh, plastic uh, underneath uh, the seat thingy that guard rests and this is the mount on which one of the uh, tabs on the airbox rests and one goes on the other side and then two are on this side these are the short ones and this long one this one was from in in there so these have been kept here. Now let's move on. Next would be up here. I am on the left side of the bike now from where the airbox opening is. You see this clamp? That is uh, the hose that is coming from the EVAP. So this has to be dismounted using a nose plier. And uh, let me get the angle but you get the point. I will clamp it like this and move it back. So let me do that. So this is the clamp that I was talking about, twist like this and then move back and it's the same way it is going to go back in. Now there is another clamp for the hose that you see in the, I think I can get access from here, you see this, uh, this clamp. So I'll be using nose plier again, let's disconnect this as well. This is the breather, engine breather hose that is connected to the engine that's coming from there. So let's disconnect this. 
Man, this video is gonna be long, but there is your clamp. Now this can be pushed out. Here you go. This is free. The same for this one, that fat one that is going there. The bigger one, whatever you want to call it. This has to be pulled back as well. This is also free. Now I'm surprised to see one thing. Uh, this is the air manifold that holds the uh, bracket, oh sorry, the throttle body, and that has been zip tied. I'm not sure why that is. Usually there is a metal clamp, like there is, I'll show you what I'm talking about. But anyway, ways, I'll be reusing it. So let me open this again, the same technique with the small screwdriver. So trying to open that zip tie was quite a fail, but I saw that this is quite loose enough and this is gonna slide back. So that's what I'm gonna do. And as you see, this is out of the way. Now there is this bracket, 12 mm one. We'll have to free this bracket as well. So 12 mm and this bracket has fallen, but the air box should come out now. And now you see there is this uh, air uh, sensor, air intake sensor. This is simple, you clamp it on the behind and pull it. I'm gonna need both hands, but you get the idea. This is where I would be pressing and then pushing it, so let me do that. And there you have it. Your air box is good to go. I'm gonna slide it. Well, that should not have happened, but that's okay. I'm gonna slide it from underneath the tire. And here you go. And that is your air box, gents. Uh, now, one thing I should say, since this is out in the open now, it would have been a really good thing if Enfield would have designed it so that the bike was not taking in air from this side, but if it should have been up there, because we would have, in that case, uh, gained at least two, three inches more, because water does get inside through this from the gap as well and everything. So that's one thing maybe if Enfield <laughs> ends up watching this video, they should reconsider this. I can understand why they have done this maybe because that is the design on all their bikes or maybe if they would have put it here, it would have increased the seat height, but whatever. This does tend to be a bit problematic. Anyways, now we have the access to the uh, throttle body. Now let's move this. Now back on the right side, this is my lighting arrangement and this is a 3mm Allen key which I'll be using to loosen up this clamp that you see right here. And this is the kind of clamp that they should have provided instead of that uh, zip tie on the other side of the manifold as well. But anyways, let's loosen this out. Don't have to completely remove it but yeah, loosen it plenty enough. Let me do this. So that has been loosened. Now the next part is we have to open these two 10mm ones that hold the throttle cable bracket. Again 10mm. Should not be difficult. You get the idea. Let me completely remove these. So that has been loosened. As you can see this is detached from the cable now. So this is ready to come out and the next thing would be to remove the throttle cable uh, I'm not gonna get a good angle maybe but that is a simple-ish process let me see if I can get an angle it is uh, using your thumb or screwdriver just bring this up a bit like uh, this is the same technique that you'd be using if in case you have to replace your throttle cable and this should ideally just, that's my torch falling. And here you go. There's your throttle cable. That has come out. After that, just disconnect this hose that is coming. Just pull it from behind, as you see. So this is also free. After this, we'll be removing this choke opening. Let's do that. This choke assembly is not tightened too tightly. So just uh, try it open with the plier like this. 
and the rest it should just come off with the hand just unscrew it you get the point uh, no you don't uh, now maybe you can see it yeah so this is just gonna come out here you go that's your choke after that all that is left to do is just disconnect the sensor cable that is on this side what is this cable doing here okay this thing that you see again simple press and pull this is easy and the second one is up here this one again this is gonna be simple let me disconnect this wire for ease of use so yeah this one again simple press and pull do I need both hands it seems like that but you get the idea press it from here oh no yeah and now your throttle is ready to just slightly move it and pull it out there you go and that's on the intake side now let's uh, remove these sensors this one is gonna use a tor torx one and this is torx 25 here you go so this is the sensor using the torx one do remember the position of this if it is here it means by closing it can be it should be here only this much of you should be seeing out what i mean is uh, so this is open but this can move like this as well but the sensor would give a different reading so while opening it if it was like this keep it here itself i'll open and i'll show you so that's it you remove this and now you see this moves once you move the throttle so it is going to move like that so so is the sensor so remember this is going to be like this next up is this screw proper screw driver makes a whole lot of sense this is out now let's uh, clean this nothing special same water fuel hole on the top now you can see this is speak and span pretty much yeah looks good now let's just close this up this mount that we had open don't wash this with petrol I'm gonna just wash it with soap and water and I'll be back because uh, as you can see this also has some dirt in it so yeah let's wash this so for next part let's open up the fuel injector and you see this allen key hidden there so allen key and you won't be able to use this is 5 mm and you won't be able to use the what do you call it your LNK set there just have to make do with this and same on the other side there you go uh, 
that one so let's open this so back on this side both the allen keys have been removed this has just dropped down as you see there is an o-ring that is stuck on the head this was it and then there was this gasket that has just fallen and here we go so as you can see that is quite murky as well now for the next part we have to unlock the there is one clamp on this side and same one on this side you see the finger moving you just have to press it and then pull it out so let me pull this i'll have to put the camera down and there you have it just hooked on here just uh, clamp and this wire that's the one that goes in your tank so it is that hose fuel hose and this is your injector how do i show this yeah now do you see those very small tiny tiny holes that's your injector and from there fuel is pushed in so this unit is the injector unit now you can already see there is a lot of muck inside here as well uh, so now for the next bit to remove the injector you see this nut here this is 10 mm just hold it carefully this should not bend or break and it's easy just open this up there's a washer as well and this just comes out so this is your injector this is just a bracket that holds it up my god look at that god knows what that is maybe you try to put in grease or something i don't know but anyways now the point is we need to clean this and if you can see this is not looking too nice yeah all mucky but anyways same process since the injector is out now keeping it aside carefully that's an expensive part now let's get the cleaning tray it would be a good idea again to very carefully remove this o-ring don't let the o-ring in the rest is now good to go we get the brush few that looks clean now all shiny yeah even before the light was not doing much but now you can see now you can see yeah this is better yeah now you can see all clean now the metallurgy is not that good i mean on a fair day i might actually even smoothen things out as you can see a lot of casting marks have been left but anyways right now is not the time for that so this is the o-ring let's put this back Now there is your gasket and there is the rest of the stuff. Now it's always a good idea just to slightly use very tiny. I mean this oil is in the cap. I'm just going to be taking some oil. That's it. And just like that. Just this much. This leads to good life of the o-rings. all good all clean look at that how do i show this yeah look at that how it was earlier and how it is now yeah does not look bad does it okay so moving on uh, all of these things have been cleaned as you can see and now this is the contraption that i'll be using <laughs> well you whatever you have at the house well that can work so just pouring in some fuel in this injection this much should be okay and what I have done else is this uh, fuel is con connected to this hose and that is connected to the inlet which is actually connected to your tank otherwise and this is the injector now all that we have to do is the positive I'll show you positive and negative how I have connected those there but uh, all you have to do is connect the positive to the positive and negative to the negative and that should take care of it these are the old 
indicator cables that I had one is this and uh, this is second one so this one goes in here this is the negative on the left hand side and this one is the positive on the right hand side so this connects like this and rest as I was showing is pretty simple so here we go trying to do this again there as you can see is the injector this is the positive one here and then I connect this to the negative and as you see that's good enough this is working this doesn't need any further cleaning otherwise I could have taken small wire and clean those holes but even flow is coming out so let's just take this out but yeah that was pretty much it simple enough let's uh, remove this contraption so yeah, I removed the contraption and uh, this was the injector I yeah those tiny holes that you see there was no problem with these fuel was uh, coming out evenly so yeah this was good to go nothing required they usually don't go that bad that easily if you are keeping the air filter clean and the oil filter not I'm sorry not the air filter if we are keeping the oil clean uh, fuel that is that you're using from a good petrol bunk yeah there is not going to be any problem now let's just put it all back so now uh, this rod or spacer is going to go in here but there was some pottery stuff here I think they had done it to take care of any rusting I'm not sure don't quote me on that but I'm just going to apply slight grease in here yeah that should take care of it and uh, that was it the rest is easy you're gonna take dip my fingers slightly again in the cap top end just this much of you apply it on this rubber that you see on top of here very small this time because this is where the fuel is gonna go in from if this hinders it can be a problem this should be decent and now this is simply gonna go in here like thus and as you see this is in now this 10 mm bolt will go in let me tighten this so that part is ready now let's get this fixed as well so there was this one bit and there was this other bit